Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 3. Jeremiah 4 and 3. Hallelujah. And as you are standing and turning for the reading of the word, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now, God, for these your saints, for oh God, your remnant, Lord, those that want even more of you, God. We ask that you're able to open up their eyes, their minds, their spirits, Lord God, to receive your word tonight, God. We thank you for what you've done, Lord God, the education that you place upon our church family, God. We thank you for watching out, for holding out, for keeping us in the right spot at the right time, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, we lift up our pastor tonight, God. Give him health and strength, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing him to be blessed to be the watchman, Lord God. We thank you for what he's doing, Lord God, in the lives of these saints. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Jeremiah 4 and 3. For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. The title of tonight's lesson is Sowing Away from Satan. Sowing Away from Satan. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness, this word is powerful, you all. And if nothing else, I have to say that I have to come to you very, very real at this point in time tonight. I'm just, I'm real and I want to come to you and explain to you that I'm really just tired. Is anybody tired? I'm tired of offering up things I own to good for good for nothing folks that don't appreciate what I have to offer them and what I have done for them and I like them. And I've been right there for them. I'm tired of giving away my love, my money, my time, my attention, my worry, my heart, my actions, my words for foods that don't treasure me or in any old type of way. I'm tired, you all. To be honest, it's outside of the will of God for us to even be doing things like that. But the Bible tells us in Matthew 7 and 6, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your prayers before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rent you. See, what happens is we keep giving and giving and giving and giving to folks that don't do anything, don't feed back, don't edify, don't put anything in our hearts, and they just keep taking and taking and taking and taking and taking, and then they don't rent anything back to you. They get nothing else of importance into your life. They don't sow it to you, but you keep sowing it to them. Ultimately, we sow it into Satan. We allow a demon to continue to take from us and not get back to us. I might be all by myself tonight. Y'all must go understand what I'm talking about this time. You don't have to say it for the in the Bible because I know what I'm going through. So if I'm not talking to anybody else, let me talk to myself tonight. But if I know that I'm the only one who has, I know I can't be the only one that got some leeches in their life. You know that leech that will just grab a hold to you and suck everything up out of you, all your blood out of you, all your time out of you, all your love out of you, all your heart out of you, that will take everything you have and not give you anything that, I know I'm not the only one that got some leeches in their mouth, but riding on my deliverance in order to supply it and gratitude. I'm tired of you riding on me in order for you to continue to be in prayer for. My God. In the last of Luke, Jesus tells of the well-known power prodigal son. And in the parable, a good father left an inheritance for his son. We all want to do that. We want to leave something to our children. You're not living your life to spend all your life and all your money right now in here today. You've got to leave something for your children and your children's children. But well, one of his boys wanted his money right now. Now for all intents and purposes, he was all the money he asked for because it was his inheritance. But we know that your man has no right to make a demand. See, people Sometimes have a tendency to make, make demands on you. They have no right to make a demand on who you are. Simply because you're their mother, you're their father, you're their sister. We've been friends for a long time. So people have a tendency to think that they can make a demand on who you are in order to continue to be who they are not trying to be. Luke 15 and 12, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his leave. This is This might not touch y'all, but because you all have children that are super holy. I know y'all kids are doing the right things, y'all. Y'all kids wash dishes and all the kids don't get asking for no money. And they can't, their gas tank always full. And you know, you got them righteous children. Righteous children. That's what you got right before you, but 
You all have the perfect day. You know, right? Got all that. They washed this. Now, this is not good. I'm just going to talk to me right now. Because y'all kids are so sweet. Well, y'all kids are so sweet. Well, you see, I got a joke in my life. And, and my joke has a tendency to have an attitude from time to time. She, she has been given a bout with bronitis, and as my pastor has pointed it, uh, bronitis when you we think a little grown than what you are, even at the age of 25, we, we really ain't really just grown. We might have graduated, we, we, we might be living on our own, but we really just really ain't just that grown. And sometimes I had to lose it on them sometimes. I, I had to lose it on her head, I, I had to lose it on her life. I had to try to come up with this stuff. Because she was trying to come up against me. Because when they love you and they know you love them, they have a tendency to let you think that you owe them something. Well, I'm the one that gave you life. And now, how is it that I'm the one that owes you anything? And then you have to talk about yourself. But you said, I'm like, no, people are saying, if I said no, they go. Yeah, so I'm not going to forget about all that. Because you got to sow into something. Everybody is all right. Then we met with folks on the bank. 
You get mad after you know they were ungrateful and gave you to them in the first place. You know that you were sold into a spirit that really wasn't grateful in the first place. You really wasn't thankful in the first place. You were giving it to somebody and giving it to somebody that really wasn't giving anything unto you. There's a scripture in the Bible that we quote incorrectly that says, The wealth of the wicked is made up for the just. I guess that is why we can't get it because we say it wrong. Because the scripture actually says in Proverbs 13 and 22, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of a sinner is made up for the just. We don't consider ourselves wicked nor sinners, but it seems like our wealth is made up for our bad kids, our shasher siblings, our wicked cousins, our tight little parents, and our so called friends. So we got it twisted. It's like we twist the scripture, we twist what reality is. No one should be sowing into something that's not going into anything. And the enemy will use our hearts against us so we can continue to sow into his kingdom instead of into our own kingdom. I'm telling you tonight, it's time for us to start sowing into God. My I'm God. telling you when it's time to start sowing into God. I'm not talking about just your ties because we always think the ties me, I got to give my money. You're supposed to do that. And if you don't know nothing else in Jesus, church, you know that your 10% go to God, and that after this is offering, is that you give in the excess to the no more to God. So if I don't teach you anything else, I shouldn't have to teach anybody for this little amount of time. But I will say that we have to be able to give something back to ourselves, give something back to the ministry, something back to God, that's even more than our money. See, we're so and so much into demons, and so and too much into what people are giving us in the past, so and too much into our memories, so and too much into what we thought we had back in the day, instead of so and too here and now, and what God is doing in our lives right now, what God wants to do next in our destiny, because we too busy living in our past. We don't consider ourselves weak, and we are blessed. Yes. We are blessed to be a blessing. But we are not supposed to be blessing folks that can't get a prayer through. Folks that ain't stepped into a church, they can't pray for themselves, they can't lay hands on themselves, they can't for themselves, they don't know the word for themselves, they don't know how to meditate for themselves, they don't know how to do anything for themselves. But we keep throwing the folks that ain't stepped into not just Jesus people, anybody's church. We not stepped into anybody's church. I'm throwing good money out of there. You never want to go higher because you're not tired to know God and you're not giving God nothing. You're not offering anything to anything of the kingdom of God. And God is not going to bless something that's already cursed. My pastor said this to me this past week. He didn't start building his wealth until he learned how to stop sowing into Satan's kingdom My God. and giving it to Satan's people. I'm going to throw something in on that and say, even those posing as saints, because Satan has people posing as saints that sitting next to you or sitting by you, and you think you're dealing with a saint and it's really an eight, and you keep throwing it to them up, thinking that, uh, oh, they're part of my Christian walk, or they're part of the community. He told me something a long time ago. Just because somebody quotes a scripture don't mean that they're saying. Everybody that quotes scripture to you, because, because the enemy knows the tickling of your ear. And we love God's word. So he will use someone with the scripture and will quote the scripture exactly the way it's supposed to be said. And it will grab our attention and hook us. And once we get hooked in by the Satan, by Satan using even God's word against us, we'll find ourselves sowing into the enemy and thinking we give it unto God. Or a godly God. Or a person that is under the same, or a Christian, we fall victim to. Our biggest problem is our hearts. And if you don't open up and recognize that you have to guard your heart. See, we quit on talking about we have to guard our anointing. We don't want to be this person who is too loud. You got to guard your heart against the enemy. Because he knows that that's what we walk in. Because as Christians, we are lovers of people. We love one another. We love people around us. We want everybody to be saved. And because we want everybody to be saved, we have a tendency to do everything we can to draw our men unto me. But ain't no drawing to somebody that won't even listen to the word of God. There's no drawing to somebody that won't even meditate, that won't even pick up a Bible and read a scripture. You know, I don't care where you start. You can start in Genesis, you can start in Matthew, you can start in Revelation. Just read the word. We saw it in the folks that don't even know or have a desire to know the word. 
We wasted too much of our lives on foolishness. Leah didn't get released from the bondage of love until she kept giving. And she didn't get released from the bondage of love and kept giving to Jacob until she had Judah. And said, now I will praise the Lord. Now I will praise the Lord. Genesis 29 and 35. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, now I will praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and left him. She did everything she could to get that man to love her, and he still not like you. Are you talking to nobody like that? Because everybody y'all paid and loved y'all through y'all boots and balls. I'm talking about nobody actually sold love to somebody, and nobody sold that love back. Y'all had that perfect relationship. I'm here to tell somebody this evening you better take your baby and find some joy. You better learn the art of walking away. You're giving up the best years of your life. There is someone to love you that loves someone else. Yeah. Oh, so in your life, so in your love, is someone that don't want you. And it's time to wake up, smell the coffee, the flowers, the ocean, whatever it is you need to smell. Smell the salt, I don't know. But it's time to wake up and smell it. That if it don't want you, it don't want you. And it ain't gonna do it if it is dead. It's time to wake up. Basically, we shouldn't be cool. 
you know, he had came upon Mabel and he was able to come into his, his area. He could have taken all the livestock and, and all the harvest, but he didn't do it. He had a million and he had a whole bunch of soldiers, but he couldn't go. But he said to Mabel, all I need you to do is when I need provisions, just provide it for me. Well, Mabel had an attitude. I ain't giving you nothing. Now, now, mind you, he would have took everything they had right there. Slaughtered them, school. He had no clue. All he said, if my men need something, put my men up. And they said, no, I ain't need them. I ain't no, I don't want to hear you. They will refuse them. They didn't like being told. They was about to get his boys and tear up his land. My God. They stepped in and tried to call for peace. Verse 10 and 25, 15 and 16, but the men were very cruel to us. And we were not hurt, neither missed we anything as long as we were conversant with them when we were in the field. They were a wall unto us both by night and day. By all the while we were with them, keeping the sheep. Meaning, David took care of us the whole time. And we, all we had to do was talk to them and work with them. And they will continue to take care of their walk with his people. <laughs> See, it's tough when folks you ain't good to turn around and act like you don't you don't get them. Like they not me and they can't help you now. You've been doing everything, everything possible in your power to help somebody. And they say, I ain't doing it yet. My God. So we're not, we so not good unto Satan spirits when someone can just turn their back on you and walk away. When they can just look and see who you are and say, that will be me. When they know all the things that you've done and say, you ain't worth it. When they can sit up here and do all that they've done and you still don't even know who I am. My God. You sow your seed into foolishness every time you look at it. But you really have to learn to think it out. Both of you know we stop. Both of you being you and the person that's walking away turning their back on you. So if you ever stop helping, they will be out in everything. And they still act like you owe them something. Oh, you, I'm doing everything for you. I'm right there by you. Whenever you need something, I'm pouring out to you and you still can't do it. He's throwing a seed to the road. My God. I mean, they have fallen and been prepared to start a neighbor. And this joke is talking. Jump. I'm tired of us talking. Jump, y'all. Taking advantage of our goodness. Taking advantage of our heart. We pouring out, getting out, getting in, getting there. And folks still not thankful, not grateful. Not even having the spirit of saying thank you. You owe me this because I did this back in 2020, 2020, 2020. You did, I did this back in this, but you still owe me. Okay, I'm telling you. Can you imagine how many blessings we've given away to devilish people? Yeah. Our best time and time, our best two dollars, our best forgiveness. We've given the jokers that ain't broke us. Best time. forgiveness, my God. Our best everything, our best heart, the folks that don't give us nothing. We need to drop these zeros in our lives and make no contributions to their lives. Or at least give them what they have given us, which is nothing. We take oh too God. much caught up in what we think is the right thing. And if they leave good riddance, we got to be able to be okay if somebody walk away. We got to be okay if somebody say, never mind. We got to be okay if somebody say, all right, I don't want to be with you no more. Be okay with that. First John 2 and 19, they went out from us. But they were not of us. But if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. One thing I say about these people, church, we love you all. But if you leave us, then you are not among us. We're going to call you. We're going to try to get you to come back. We're going to try to do everything you can. But we can't let you to stay. God. And we can't spare anybody to stay in our lives that don't want to be with us. My God. It's okay. You can't pay for love. It costs too much. It costs too much on who you are, who you want to be, who God's trying to get to you. It costs too much for love. At least if I 
My God, Jesus. You know they not doing nothing about it. You know they not trying to go higher, be higher, do nothing else, but continue to ask for more, more, more. Yeah. We know people that are takers and not givers, but we just keep sowing our precious seeds unto foolishness. But after tonight, my God, after tonight, we need no more seeds. The Bible of John 15 and 2, for in the branch in me that breathes out his breath, not fruit, he taketh away. As many of us around that ain't bringing forth fruit, um, the Bible said, God will take it away. And every branch that bringeth fruit, he purges it and it may be bring forth more fruit. So we gotta bring fruit lovers into our lives. We asking God right now that everything that surrounds us bear fruit. We asking God right now, everybody that comes up in our circle, we gonna bring forth fruit. Fruit of the word, fruit of finances, fruit of love, fruit of forgiveness, fruit of giving. We gonna ask everybody around us to bring forth one more fruit. We ask it right now, and if it does not bear fruit, God, we ask you to take it away right now. We ask you to get out of my house. Thank you. 